Hey. Lord of Ord. 14 Digital Shaman, Michael Adams. And I'm going to read out of the book Far Journeys from Robert A. Monroe. In particular, chapter 12, most of chapter 12, and chapter 13. And I find this to be the most plausible explanation for why we're here in this place we called the world and earth and our life and our existence. Don't believe there's lessons to be learned. But and this is the one thing out of this whole book and everything that Robert Monroe has offered us. Maybe I was, you know, there's just two things. The most primary thing is obviously his um, experiences uh, with outer body experiences, O O V E. -E. But in chapter 12 and chapter 13, it talks about loose. And what we produce through our emotions is primarily love. And how these ethereal forces and the force, if you will, and a lot of people talk about the super force, right? And the ultimate thing in our life is about love. The ultimate answer to life is about love. And they're right, but I don't think they've, most people realize what it really entails. But I think Robert Monroe was onto something. And, it, and uh, it was devastating for him. It took him months to recover from it, if he ever did. And I know that the, uh, the shills there and the, the agents in the Monroe Institute uh, have done a good job of dis- dismissing it. But I think we need to talk about it. Loose. The purpose of why you and I are here. Why we go through all the pain and suffering. And ultimately, love. And why we generate love. And the energy, if you will, the frequency of love. And it's, there's these forces. And a force that seems to harvest it. Like a drug. And they feast upon it. Now what is going on is he's, uh, Monroe is having a dialogue with an entity on the other side that he calls BB. Eventually also the uh, inspects. He talk, talks to them as well. In chapter 13, ultimately they show him the purpose or the reason why we're here in the meat suit. And why this place was created in the first place. And the real purpose for it all. Why we live in such a predatory, parasitic uh, environment, world. What loose is all about. And how that generates the purest form of loose. It is the purpose most likely for life that I found. I know it's not a very pleasant answer, but it makes the most sense. With this whole, you know, if people who claim about, you know, and talk about reincarnation, the problem is we suffer from amnesia. Our, 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 our memories are swiped clean. We don't remember our previous lives. Karma? Hardly. And why do the evil people keep on thriving? And they come back for another life, really? To pay off their debts? Really? They don't even know what they did last. We don't know what we did in our last life if there is reincarnation, which I think there probably is. And I think we were, and people say that we agreed to come here. And I'm sure that is the case. But I do believe from my research and listening to other people. Uh, people like Mark from uh, Conscious Research. Sorry, Mark, I always get yours. 
Forever Conscious Research uh, channel <clears throat> and others, a few others, that, um, yeah, we, we're, we're here to produce one thing. We're walking factories, batteries, producing frequencies that people talk about, right? L loose. Love. And they feed upon it. And we go to the other side, we get love bombed, and we get this overwhelming sense of love, apparently, from what most people say when they have near-death experiences and etc., but not always, but most people talk about it. And, and it's this, oh, they go to the light and this great feeling of love like they've never felt ever before. Acceptance. Love. It's like this what we're all designed to do. And we keep coming back over and over again to produce this thing called loose. Love. That was all the form of it. The pure light. And this super force, what they call God, the all consuming fire, and some in the Bible, the spirit. Yeah, it's all about love. And it will put us through living hell in order for it to get obtain its love. It's really bizarre. But it's up to you to make the decision. But I. Listen to what the guy has to say. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense to me. After all the research that I've done, studying, prayer, uh, life experiences, the only thing that makes sense is that we were set up in this meat suit, <clears throat> in this environment, to produce loose. The highest grade of loose is love. Uh, regardless, uh, if say we're full of anger, is a form of loose. All right, and all the other feelings and emotions. That's what we're all about. It's something to really think about, S seriously. Because I can tell you one thing: your pastor doesn't know what he's talking about. The priest doesn't know what he's talking about. The Pope doesn't. I think they, they might know what the real gig is, but they're not some of them at the top. Maybe some of them are aware. But for the most part, they're just useful dupes to help produce the loose. War, violence, pestilence, plagues, cataclysms. All these stressors to put on us to create loose for these other entities that are around us that feed upon. Listen to what this guy has to say. When you're done listening to this guy, it's just me reading it. So please forgive me for uh, my lack of ability to read in an entertaining way. But listen to it. And tell me what you think afterwards. Please. I think you'd be, you might be um, shocked, disturbed, but it might, res it might resonate. Very few people know about this. Very, very, very few people know about the true meaning of what life is. But I believe that this actually pretty much hits the nail on the head is what the true meaning of life is here. It's not a very pleasant answer not meant to make you feel good but they say the truth will set you free somehow this was to help set you free mark over it to uh, forever conscious research argues that maybe we should develop this um, how do I say this um, autonomous Un never yielding um, attitude that we get to the other side that we say no we don't want to be part of this stuff anymore 
Not to buy into it. Not to buy into the light. Not to buy into the love bombing. Not to buy, I would argue not to buy into the the freak show that you'll see on the other side. Uh, the things that may cause you to be feel full of dread and fear. Define yourself, your authentic, autonomous self. I'm doing a terrible job of it. But Mark, Mark does a good job of it. Let's do more of it, I wish. And I know you might feel a little jaded from other people using his ideas. Um, I don't blame him. But that's how it goes when you're a trailblazer. It happens to everybody in this loose farm that we live in. You know, I know a lot of people that know about this stuff, and they're really angry. I don't see how they... they, they, they don't they realize that, they're, that their anger, they're helping to produce the loose, that they're and, and actually feeding the beast? Yeah. There's a lot of things to be pissed off about. There's a lot of things to be angry about. There's... But just remember, I mean, your your anger is feeding the beast. Somehow we have to be neutral. Like some of the, the, the gurus of the East say, to be still, to be present, to accept everything that happens with a smile. Maybe we're just supposed to just make love. Um, not they say make love, right? Make love, right? Make love. It's not literally just, you know, having intercourse. I mean, literally make love, right? Um, love's the answer, right? It probably is. The problem is we had learned to manage that. I mean, the feelings, we had needed to not be deceived by it, be tricked by it. Being empathetic and caring and compassionate for others and for our children and our family, if we're getting a chance to do so, yeah, we should do it, right? It's the right thing to do. Because we don't want to feel the guilt, the remorse, the reason, right? Of not trying, even if we don't, it's not reciprocated. But then again, you know, then the day, it's to be able to, when we get to the other side, that we can hold our head high and say, you know what? Nope. Um, I know I did the best I could, and you guys, where's your accountability? On the other side, where's your accountability? Your archonic forces, your ethereal beings, God itself, the super force. Where's your accountability in all this? How come you don't, you don't have to go through all the suffering and pain? But we do. And if you did, why didn't you warn us? And why didn't you explain to each and every one of us what's really going on? Why hide it from us? Why hide the secret? It's very sinister what's going on. But you guys, check it out. Tell me what you think about it. I think it, there's, it's a big answer to the question why we're here. What was, what's the real purpose of life? Then the question that still remains, where do we come from and how do they hijack us? How do they kidnap us? How do they deceive us, trick us to come here? The trickster spirit, huh? Our spirits. And then the, answer, the next question is, how do we not return? Those of us who don't want to return. Some of you do want to return. Maybe you enjoy all the pain and suffering, the games. Maybe you like it. They say there are many that do. I don't like this place. I don't like the system. This is not the place that I belong. I don't belong here. Maybe you feel the same way. I never felt I ever belonged here. In more ways than one. Not just simply because of maybe health issues or the way I look or how people, you know, maybe rejected me or whatever it may be, my issues. I just never, even if, even if, if everything was perfectly aligned for me, right? Everything I ever wanted, right, came true in his life. I still, the inner, the inner man, the true essence, who I am, is, I've never felt right about this place. I've been constantly searching for an answer to why, how. 
what the heck's going on? A lot of people say you shouldn't, shouldn't ask questions. Go along with it. Go with the flow. I think a lot of times we do go with the flow regardless. We can't fight destiny, predeterminism. But we can say, I do think this, if, if nothing else, there's got to be some way not to return here. Some way, I mean, I don't agree with this place. I don't agree with this, this system. I think it's so wrong. I'm, but you know, at the end of the day, I can understand the other forces, why they feast upon us. We live, I mean, look what we're forced to do. We're forced to prey off other, you know, literally eat other living forms of life, <clears throat> produce loose constantly. It's mandatory. I mean, whether it's plant, or it's freaking, you know, animals that eat plants, cows, pigs, whatever birds you know what I mean we need the protein just to sustain this meat suit it's just so predacious it's like you know if I were if I were God and if I was creating a place would I really create this place I wouldn't create it now I can understand other forces and other beings that would create it because they would see a way of profiteering from it but I don't want to do that forced to do it while I'm here but I don't want to do it anyways check this out listen to me listen to the reading and tell me what you think about it I think this is important stuff far more important in a day than Bigfoot let's put it that way TSI brochure now this is where it starts getting good the TSI brochure all about the places and things we have, we would be visiting. All about Earth and humans, how it got started, what it's for, all of that stuff. I closed and opened slowly. They don't match up. Here, get your new precept. <clears throat> BB tossed a rope at me. I took it and curiously and unfolded it. Click. Someone, somewhere, or both, in millions or uncountable, requires likes, needs, values, collects, drinks, eats, and uses a drug, sink, a substance, I ident, louche. These some ones or some things or somewhere, uh, both and millions or uncountable require, once again, and like need and value and collect and drink, eat, and use a drug, a substance called loose. Electricity, oil, oxygen, gold, wheat, water, land, oil, old coins, uranium. This is a rare substance and somewhere and those who possess loose find it vital for whatever it is used for faced with this question of supply and demand a universal law of somewhere someone decided to produce it artificially so to speak rather than search for it in its natural form, he decided, this could be the Damaris, by the way, to build a garden and grow loose. And that garden is this world. This physical world that we live in. And we are the producers of loose, as we will learn. In a natural state, loose was found in found to originate from a series of vibrational actions in the carbon oxygen cycle and the residue was loose in varying degrees of purity. It occurred only during such act 
reaction and secondarily during the uh, reactive process. Prospectors from somewhere range far and wide in search of loot sources and new discoveries were hailed with much enthusiasm and reward. So it was that someone and his garden changed all this. Far off in a remote area, he set to work on his experiment. First, he created a proper environment for the carbon oxygen, oxygen cycle where it w would flourish. He created a balance with much care so that proper radiation and other nourishment would be in continuous supply. He then tried his first crop, which actually did pour, did produce loose, but only in small quantities and of comparatively low grade and not significant enough <clears throat> to take back to the heart of somewhere. The problem was twofold. The life period was too short and the crop units themselves were too minute. This brought about limits of quality quantity as the crop had no time to generate loose in such close tolerance. Moreover, the loose could be harvested only at the moment of termination of the lifespan, not one moment before. His second crop was no better, if, at, if as good. He changed the environment to another part of the garden where the density was gaseous rather than liquid and the higher density chemicals formed a solid base and these were still ava available. He planted numerous units and many varieties in a new form with a great increase in size, some many thousands of times larger and more complex than the simple uh, unicellular first crop. He reversed the carbon oxygen cycle, yet all had a basic uniformity. Like the first crop, they would reseed at regular intervals and terminate their lifespans automatically. To avoid the uneven distribution of chemicals and radiation, which had uh, been prevalent in the first crop, he immobilized the second crop. Each was designed to stay principally in its own section of the garden. To this end, each was given firm uh, tendrils, which burrowed deep, burrowed deep in the more dense chemical matter. Attached to this was a stem or trunk which helped elevate the upper portion upward for its share of needed radiation. So we're talking about plants now, right? Trees. <clears throat> I wonder if this is the reason at the end of the day they chop down the giant trees. Years, uh, hundreds of maybe thousands and maybe millions of years ago. As an added thought, Brilliant color radi radiators uh, accompanied by small par uh, particle generators were mounted on each unit, usually near the top or s uh, symmetrically s centered. He set up circulating patterns in the gaseous envelope around the crop, principally the aid to the reseeding process. Later, he discovered that the same turbulent effect served as a means of harvesting the luge. 
it was the turbulence, if the turbulence were violent enough, the crop would be blown down, the lifespan terminated, the louche would be discharged. This was especially useful when an immediate loose supply was desired at a particular point rather than at harvest time. Despite all this, the second crop was most unsatisfactory. While it was true that a much greater quantity was attained, the unrefined Luge produced was of such low grade that it was scarcely worth the effort. In addition, the growth period was now too long and no increase of quality resulted. Some vital element was missing. Someone hovered over his garden for a long period and study before he attempted the third crop. It was indeed a challenge. True, he was particularly successful. He had grown loose, yet the product he, he his efforts f fell far short of the wild uncultivated variety. It was inevitable that he perceived the answer. The third crop was living proof of this truth. The original carbon oxygen cycle must be included. Mobility must be restored. Both factors had shown great promise in high-grade loose production. If size could be added to this, much could be accomplished. With this plan in the forefront, someone removed various sample units from the first crop, which was still thriving in the liquid portion of the garden. He modified them to exist and grow in the gaseous area. He adapted them first to take nourishment from the second crop which he permitted to abound for this very purpose. Thus it was at the first of the mobiles, the third crop, came into being. The mobiles took nourishment from the second crop, thus ending its lifespan and producing low-grade loose. When each huge mobile terminated its own lifespan, Additional loose was produced. The quantity was massive, but the frequency pattern of the loose uh, uh, residue still left much to be desired. So obviously, like the second crop would be the plants, the new third crop uh, crop would be plant eaters, whether dinosaurs or whatever it may be. And a larger, you know, larger entities, right? <clears throat> it was by accident that someone came up with the prime catalyst as regards l l loose production. The monstrous and slow moving mobiles had a lifespan far out of proportion to their nourishment input. And the growth and life termination process was of such length that soon the mobiles would all but decimate the second crop. The entire garden would be out of balance and there would be no loose production whatsoever. Both the second and third crop faced extinction. As the second crop grew scarce, energy needs of the mobiles became acute. Often two mobiles would seek to ingest the identical second crop unit. This created conflict, which resulted in physical struggle among two or more of the ungainly mobiles. 
Some had observed these struggles, at first bemused with the problem, then with great interest. As the struggle ensued, the mobiles were um, emitting, excuse me, stop that, were emitting uh, loose. <clears throat> so once again, uh, as the struggle ensued, the mobiles emitted were emitting loose. Not in fractional amounts, but in sizable, uh, uh, usable quantities and of a much higher purity. He quickly put the theory to the test. He removed another unit of the first crop from the liquid garden area and redesigned it for the gaseous environment, but with no with one significant change. The new mobile would be somewhat smaller, but would require the ingestion of other mobiles for, uh, for nourishment. This would solve the problem of overpopulation of the mobiles, at, and at the same time would create good quantities of usable louche. During each conflict struggle, plus a bonus, if the new class of mobiles terminated the lifespan of the other, someone would be able to transmit to somewhere practical amounts of reasonable pure louche. Thus it was that the rule of the prime catalyst came into being, conflict among carbon-oxygen cycle units, as you and I, and all the animals in this godforsaken place, bring forth constant emissions of louche. It was, a simple, it was as simple as that. Satisfied that he had uh, found the formula, some have prepared the fourth crop. He knew now that the third crop mobiles, which were too large and too long in lifespan to be ultimately practical. If grown in large numbers, the entire garden would have to be expanded and enlarged. There was not space enough to grow such massive single units, and the proportionate leafy second crops to support them. As he reasoned correctly, there that correctly, that more rapid in, increased mobility would expand the conflict factor with a resonant higher loose output. In one single motion, someone terminated the lifespan of all the lumbering third crop mobiles. Going back to the first crop and the liquid area, he modified and expanded them into a multitude of shapes and sizes, gave them complex multicellular structures of high mobility. He designed into them a pattern of balance. And there were those that ingested the second crop type of carbon cycle units, basically immobiles, immobile, as an energy source. There were others, very highly mobile, who required for energy the ingestion of the other mobile modified first crop units. The complete cycle operated quite satisfactory. The stationary secondary crop modification and the liquid environment, obviously we're talking about the sea and the oceans, the lakes, and right, uh, flourished. <clears throat> Small, highly active liquid breathing mobiles took nourishment, ate the second crop modification, large and or other active mobiles, consumed for, for energy the small plant eat, eaters. When any mobile grew too large and slow, it became an easy target for the smaller mobiles, who attacked it ferociously in ferocious numbers. 
the chemical residue from these ingestive actions settled to the bottom of the liquid medium and so provided new nourishment for the stationaries, modifying second crop, completing the circuit. The result was a steady flow of loose from the lifespan termination of the stationaries from the intense conflict among the mobiles to avoid ingestion, and finally from the su sudden termination of the lifespan of such mobiles as an inevitable product of such conflicts. Turning to another portion of the garden, the gaseous area, with a dense compound base, someone applied the same techniques with even more advanced improvement. He added many varieties of stationaries, originally second crop, to provide sufficient and diverse nourishment for the new mobiles he was to create. As in the other garden area, he made such mobiles into a balance of two species, those who ingested and drew energy from the second crop stationaries and those who required other mobiles for substance. He created them in literally thousands of original types, small, large, and yet none so large as the third crop mobiles. The inge and ingeniously gave each some uh, importance for conflict. Seven percent a pure uh, a pertinence for conflict. These took the form of mass, elusive seeds, deceptive and or protective coating, color radiation, wave action, and particle perceptors and detectors. Unique higher density protuberances for gording and gashing and rendering during and rending during conflict. All of the latter served neatly to add to and prolong the conflict periods with the result increase in loose emission. As a side experiment, someone designed and created one form of mobile that was weak and ineffective by the standards of other mobiles of the fourth crop. Yet, this experimental mobile had two distinct advantages. It had the ability to ingest and take energy from both stationary and other mobiles. Second, someone... Um, Sorry about that. Second, someone pulled forth a piece of himself, no other source of such substance being known or available, to act as an intensive ultimate trigger to mobility. Following the rule of attraction, someone knew that such infusion would create and this particular mobile species an unceasing mobility. Always it would seek to satisfy the attraction this tiny moat of himself engendered as it sought reunion with the infinite whole. So, so I'm seeing like yeah, a female and a, a male, what? Reproduction, right? And all that goes along with it, right? Survival. Just pass on the seed. Okay, thus the drive for satisfaction of energy requirements through ingestion would not be the only motive, motivating force. More important, the needs and 
compulsions created by the peace of someone could not be satis uh, sa uh, uh, situated, situated, situated through the garden. Thus, the need for mobility would uh, be ever present, and the conflict between the, this need and that energy replacement would be constant, possibly to continuous higher order loose emitter if it survived. The fourth crop exceeded all of someone's expectations. It became apparent that the a constant useful flow of luge was being produced in the garden. The balance of life operated perfectly with the conflict factor, producing immense amounts of luge and a steady supplement brought into being by the constant lifespan termination from all types of mobiles and stationaries. To handle the output, someone set up special collectors to aid in the harvest. He set up channels to convey the raw luge from his garden to somewhere. No longer did somewhere depend primarily upon the wild state as principal source of luge. The garden of someone had ended that. With the success of the garden and the production of luge by cultivated means, others began to design and build their gardens. This was, the, was in accordance with the law of supply and demand. Vacuum is an unstable condition. As the amount of luge from someone's garden only partially met the requirements of somewhere. Collectors on behalf of the others actually entered the garden of someone to take advantage of those small emissions of luce overlooked and ignored the collectors of someone. Someone, his, his work completed, returned to somewhere and occupied himself with other matters. Loose production stayed at a constant level under the supervision of the collectors. <clears throat> Only alterations were ordered <clears throat> by someone himself. Under the instructions of someone, the collectors periodically harvested segments of the fourth crop. This was done to ensure adequate chemical radiation and other nourishment for the younger oncoming units. The secondary purpose was to provide occasional extra amounts of loose created by such harvesting. To reap such harvest, the collectors generated storms of turbulence and turmoil in both the gaseous uh, um, envelope and the more solid chemical formations that were the base of the garden itself. Such upheavals have an effect of, had the effect of terminating lifespans of multitudes of fourth crop as they were crushed under the, the rolling base foundation and smothered under waves of the agitated liquid area of the garden. Uh, by <laughs> by uh, peculiarity of design, fourth crop units could not maintain their carbon oxygen cycle surrounded by the liquid medium. The garden pattern of life might have gone on thus throughout eternity had it not been for the perception, the perception and inquisitiveness of someone. On occasion he would study samples of luge from his garden, and there was no motive to do so, other than the fact that someone 
may have held a remote continuing interest in his project. On a particular analysis of a loose sample, someone had casual, <coughs> casually examined the emissions and was about to return to it, to the reservoir, when he became aware of a difference. It was very slight, but there it was. All right, his interest centered immediately. He looked again, woven delicately in with the more common loose emanations was a slender fragment of purified and distilled loose. This was an, an possibility. Purity and distilled loose resulted only after the wild state loose had been Process many times. The loose from the garden of someone required the same treatment before it could be used. Yet, here it was, so finely graded in its refined radiation that it could and would not return into compound with the raw substance. Someone reaffirmed his test, and the res result still was positive. There was a factor in his garden of which he was unaware. Quickly, someone left somewhere and returned to his garden. Outwardly, all seemed the same. Salivate gases areas of the garden were where an endless carpet of green reflection from the thriving second crop. Modified first crop in the liquid area was in perfect accord with the action-reaction law, a division of cause and effect. Someone perceived without a delay that the difference, the source of distilled loose, lay, oops, oops, lay uh, neither in the first nor the second crop. He found his first uh, momentary touch of distilled loose emanation in one of the units of the fourth crop, which by then had uh, filtered throughout the plantings of the second crop. The flash came during the unusual action of this unit as it entered into a life-terminating struggle with another fourth crop unit. This allowed, this alone would not create distilled loose. Someone knew and he probed deeper for the source. It was at that moment he discovered the difference. The fourth crop unit was not struggling in conflict over an ingestible remnant of a weaker fourth crop unit or a tasty frond uh, from the nearby second crop stem. Or to avoid termination of life and ingestion by other conflicting fourth crop units. It was in conflict to protect and save from life termination three of its own newly generated species huddled under a large second crop unit waiting for the outcome. There was no doubt about it. This was the action that produced the flashes of distilled luge. And I think you know something about husband, wife, and child, right? With this clue, or male, female, and offspring, right? Someone examined the actions of the fourth crops units in the garden. He found similar flashes when other fourth crop units took the same action in defense of their young. 
Still, there was an inconsistency. The sum of all such flashes of distilled loose emanation from all such actions by the current fourth, fro fourth crop units would not amount to half the total he had found in the sample of the reservoir. It was obvious. Another factor was present. Systematically, he hovered over the garden, the world, and extending his perception to all the areas, and almost immediately he found the source. Higher order distilled loose radiation was originating from one particular section of the garden. Quickly, he hurried to the spot. There it was, an experimental modified fourth crop unit, one of those that contained a piece of himself in its functional pattern. It was standing alone under a leafy upper portion of a large second crop unit tree, right? It was not hungry. It was not in conflict with another fourth crop unit. It was not acting in defense of its young. And then why did it emit distilled loose in such great quantities? Someone moved closer. His perception entered into the modified fourth crop unit. And then he knew. The unit was lonely. It was this effect that produced distilled loose. Lonely. That's you and I. That's one of the reasons why it's so important to overcome loneliness. To become a... Um, because once you are at peace with loneliness, they, uh, they, they, <laughs> see, they have problems, right? They have problems with... Uh, uh, units like me. As someone drew back, he noted another unusual inconsistency. The modified fourth crop unit suddenly had become aware of his presence. It had collapsed and just jerked in strange convulsions on the solid base formation. Clear liquid was being expelled from the two radiation perceiving orifices. <laughs> All right. With this, the distilled louche emitted became ever more pronounced. It was from this that the someone pr pronounced, uh, propounded, propounded, excuse me, his now famous DLP formula which is in effect in the garden at this time. The balance of the story is well known. Someone included the fundamental of his formula. The creation of pure distilled loose is brought forth in type 4M units by the action of unfulfillment, but only if such pattern is enacted at a vibratory level above the sensory bounds of the environment. The greater the intensity of said pattern, the greater the output of loose dis 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 distillant. Distillate. Distillate. Uh, to put the formula into effect, someone designed subtle changes in his garden, all of them familiar to every historian. The splitting of all the crop units into halves to engender loneliness as they sought to reunite. The encouragement of dominance of the type 4M unit are but two of the most noteworthy innovations. As it appears now, the, gar the garden is a fascinating spectacle of efficiency. The collectors have long since become masters of the art of the DLP formula. Type 4 M units dominate and have spread throughout the entire garden. That's us, folks. With the exception of the deeper portions of the liquid medium, 
These are the principal producers of loose distillate. From experience, the collectors have evolved an entire technology with com com complementary tools for the harvesting of luge from type 4M units. The most common have been named love, friendship, family, greed, hate, pain, guilt, disease, pride, ambition, ownership, possession, sacrifice, and on a larger scale, nations and provincialism, wars, famine, religion, machines, and freedom, industry, trade, to a list, to list a few. Loose production is higher than ever before. <clears throat> like I said, this place was perfectly designed for what it's meant to be. It was closed tightly, turned inward, stunned. My first reaction was there had to be some mistake. This was not the story history of Earth. BB had it mixed up with some other port of call on their cruise schedule. Yet as I ran the road again, the overlay of what little I knew of Earth's zoology and human history was uncomfortably accurate, albeit from another perceptive perspective, excuse me, the food chain of the Earth's ecobiologic system had been well established. Knowing this about Mother Nature, some of the hardcore philosophic uh, speculators had often pondered where the human animal fit in the process. To downsize what to downsize was obvious. Who ate us? Before, it had been just that, speculation. Now, BB open plied, you get the precept ram? I dulled, yeah, I get it. Well then, BB went on, what's loose got to do with learning? I opened slightly, and you got a, the rote before you came to earth. BB smoothed. Like I gave you, it was in the TSI cruise brochure. It was, and with hundreds of other rotes we got before we left. I opened more, but tightly. Where did the brochure come from? Why, uh, yeah, from the cruise director. Where did he get it? BB flickered. I don't have a road on that. He just dumped them on us and rolled. Here's the exciting, interesting stops we'll make on the cruise. I got a good precept because it was the last one we'd visit. So it was the last road we got. That's why it's so clear. Some of the others are dim because they were in the middle not the earth wrote or humans it's all clean not wild at all i i hardened and where did the cruise director come from bb lightened oh he and the rest are a bunch of cruel uh cruels uh curls a bunch of curls from the system next to us why did they offer the cruise to you at KT-95. BB smooth. Well, it was sort of a trade. We got it all in time with systems near us. What did they get in trade? BB Lighten. Games. Games. We got more games than any other system for skips and any direction. I turned inward and closed. I was getting too hot to, it was getting too hot to handle. If the rote was real, a huge if, 
I began to drop off anger, the feeling of being on the receiving end of a huge deception. That's right, so damn place is deception. The reset at the beginning being manipulated, wanted to strike out at those who were conning me, us, all humans, who were taking something from us without our consent or permission. What happened to the freedom of idea? Was every thought and action we took guided, no, directed, and controlled just to produce more loot? Whatever that was for a breakfast table or a fuel tank and a somewhere? And what could I do about it? Even knowing, I doled deeply and dropped off more and more. Hey, Ram, BB is fading rapidly. Where are you going? Return to the physical was near instantaneous. Exactly as if I had pushed a panic button, which I had not done for long, for so long. Strong sense of uh, tiredness, both mental and physical. Neglected at check time to return. Low energy, no desire to do anything. Unable to get to sleep. Got up, went to the kitchen, made a cup of coffee, sat and stared at the cup. With no energy and desire for exploration during the two weeks following, in a depressed state, the only production that surfaced was it is sunset the Guernsey if I'm pronouncing it right Guern, Guernseys the Guernsey was walked has walked many miles around the pasture of his forage for food the grass has been more lush today here though she did not bother to consider why. She had come through the gate calmly when she, he directed her to do so. Instead of the gate across the road, he knew she would find better grass here, and that was why he moved her here. Though she did not realize it, she only did what he directed. But now, at sunset, it is, it is time again. She must go to her place. There is a uh, goading pain on her underside that tells her this. At his place up the hill, it is cool, and there is more food. He will take the pain anyway. The Guernsey... <clears throat> moved up the hill and waits beside his place. Soon the gate will open and she will walk into her position and his place and eat the grass he places before her. While she eats, he will relieve the pain until morning. After that, the man will walk away with white water and a round container. The Guernsey does not know where he got the white water, nor why he desired it. Not knowing, she doesn't care. It took, and then we go into this, this, the shock treatment, shock treatment. It took me several months to adjust to the, so this is several months, not weeks. I've been hearing stuff like several days, several weeks, or it says here several months, it, it, to adjust to the loose rope. Adjust is a very broad word to describe the complete cycle of shock, rejection, anger, depression, uh, resignation, and acceptance. My sequence paralleled remarkably the pattern of others have discovered in studies as to human response when uh, notified 
for of approaching death from illness or injury. Something was dying in me. I had long realized that the God of my childhood did not exist, at least not in the form and substance envisioned by my enculturation. However, I had deeply accepted the concept of creator and created, and I had but to look around me at the elaborate and intricate order of design of this symbiosis that made the whole process operate. The trees that grew plumb line straight up uh, if given the chance. And the that provided me and other oxygen breathers with what we needed while we fed to them unknowingly for a long period our waste products with which they needed to exist. The balance of the entire planet whose outer filtering bands of energy permitted just the proper quantity and quality of sunlight to so critical to biologic growth and of course the food chain. The Luce wrote explained everything very neatly. Most important, it explained the purpose, the reason for it all, and why it why it is. This factor had long eluded me. The Luce answer was simple and obvious. The reason was there in very prosaic fashion. We were indeed producing something of value. Luce. If one finally was able to get past the emotional barrier involved, it became hard even then to find holes in the general concept, an explanation of total human behavior and history. That left the ins inspects. Were they the gardeners, the loose collectors, or the overseers? <clears throat> the inspects. Question tantalized and tortured me for many weeks before I finally decided I must find out one way or another. On a particular night, after a great difficulty of getting two cycles of sleep, I awoke with a start and lay quietly in bed. Evidently, my fear of what I might find was greater than I thought. As I unhooked with difficulty from the physical, then slipped out to the second body as it hovered, I scanned for the inspect homing signal, but there was none. This disconcerted me at first, but I was determined and foolhardy. foolhardy. I used the I indent inspect the total rote I had on them stretched out focused and let go there was a quick and short sense of spinning movement no impression of passing through the rings then deep blackness and I, I was motionless nothing more the precept was forming that the intent I had used wasn't enough I might be at the gate of the gate to inspect territory, but I didn't have the passport to enter. I had never tried to go to them. They had always met me. I had no precept of their reality state, therefore I had arrived only at the site of our meetings, if I found focused on. A warm vibration washed through me. Very good, Mr. Monroe. You are quite correct. I began to relax somewhat. At least I had gotten this far, and at least they didn't call me Ram. Perhaps you would like, a, like it better if we used the ident by which we know you best. We believe you are ready for it now. Ready for it, 
a name they used they knew me best what could that be ash asha mean i guess it was ash shanine ash if i'm saying it right ben ashanen means ashanen ashanen we're going to say the ashanen it was both familiar and strange again the feeling of trying to recover from the severe amnesia and the gentle patience of those trying to help me remember but the louche we are aware of the disturbance you have undergone it was necessary that you experience this it goes with the territory as you put it then the louche wrote was real I began I began to flicker <clears throat> it is the translation that is not real the difficulty of placing earth and human values properly into perspectives and energies that are not of time and space is a factor very very familiar to you I turn inward picked up the loose rope loose and energy generated by all organic life in varying degrees of purity the clearest and most potent coming from humans engendered by human activity which triggers emotion the highest of such emotion being love is love loose continues Asha Ashenin or Ashenin or something like that Ashenin I'm just gonna call it Ashenin but according to the rote Lush is thrown off when life ends its physical existence when pain occurs anger hate these can't be the same as love how would you define love in your terms I know that would be next in the order of things I couldn't come up with an answer throughout history great minds and greater philosophers had given it a try with only partial success I was none of these I wouldn't even consider trying but you know it exists love is not an illusion I released the loose rote and turned deeply inward scanning it was easier for this perspective from this pers perspective or perhaps it was the presence of the inspect energy it presented itself much as I as a simultaneous mixture and sequence of musical chords and short melodies only it wasn't sound it was patterns of color of light scattered among the clutter of harmony dissonance discord excitement fun fear and emotion and beginning shortly after birth i had the pre precept of occasional surges of white first from my mother and father then smaller flashes i was unable to identify as a, to source I kept scanning through my early years for a slight glimmer of white originating in me that I put forth. To my dismay, all I could find was one small white glow for an aerial doll, aerial, <coughs> aerial dog named Pete. It was certain that the girl in high school what was her name not even a flicker either way most common misconception early manifest manifest survival drive i agreed yet i could understand why the bright red or pink chords and urgent melody were impressive even from this viewpoint no wonder an ignorant uh, curl such as i was would come up with the wrong precept 
I went on through the mess that was I in the fast forward mode. I could spot sure and solid white surges here and there of which I had then been unaware. Their reality depressed and saddened me because I found no significant emission from me that was remotely similar. It was all coming in. I took it and didn't respond. I finally cut it off. Would go into it no further. I wasn't much for a loose producer. Too many other color uh, chord patterns and melodies. Except for now. I knew some strong emissions in a few points were coming out of me. Did it take that long? You understand waveforms all come from the same baseline. The colors and white, the difference of frequency and amplitude. I knew what they were doing. I appreciated it. My focus was being diverted from what I thought was unpleasant back into an abstract yet trunk and roots position. Using the same stuff, interactive experience, one begins to learn the ex to express anger, pain, fear, and all the rest. And finally, hopefully, if you pass the course, a special energy waveform labeled love. Yet, we don't really know what it is. And with my suspicion growing, how, it, how to really use it. A carefully designed school of compressed learning. To learn to be high quality, loose love producers. The fact that human uh, physical consciousness was for the most part totally unaware of being involved in the process may be an important ingredient in itself. Precious few are cognizant of the non-physical agenda, at least overtly. It was getting pretty heavy on my cogniz cognizance, yet I began to get a very faint precept, elusive, but it was there. What would happen if the uh, Guernsey cow uh, did discover that her milk had value. What could she herself do with it if she didn't have a calf to feed it to? Could she save it? Could she spend it on more hay and protein vitamin blocks to lick? What if she then discovered man was taking the milk she produced? Rebel refused to live rebel refused to deliver any more milk, then she would no longer have a pasture in which to graze. Protection from wild dogs a bull when she needed it and most of all, a, no barn to go to where she could get relief from the pain. Without a sense of uh, serial time, she forgets that the pain eases eventually. Perhaps even knowing she wouldn't care. She wouldn't want to mess up a good thing. Therefore, who cares? Who would care? To use your term, you can't beat the machine. The precept was still there, faint and still be explained and satisfied. What about those who do beat the machine? There's always, uh, there always has to be <clears throat> exceptions. No machine is perfect, only one anomaly it is needed to prove 
a statistic or create one, are they carted off to be ground up into hamburger meat? If so, is hamburger a sort of super loose and something entirely different? Or something entirely different? Is this also a part of the machine product? Or is it rust that is scraped away and discarded? The bowl has what is their role? Never will be loose producers. It takes only one bowl for every 50 cows, so there's a surplus. And nature, the machine, left alone, there is always that automatically taken care of. The impersonality of the prospect of dominance and predestined predation, excuse me, is certainly not in the winning column. Hold it there. The precept is getting stronger. There would be no loose production without at least one, uh, one bull. So he is an indirect loose producer, vital to the method. That would infer, infer so are grass, hay, water, minerals, and the rest. Remember your waveforms, beat frequencies you liked so much. Let's see here. If a smart transmitter propagates certain waves, they can resonate with other related vibrations of like kind to form a m multiple pattern which, if thought of as light, would be white. So in and of itself, you don't have to be the end product antenna or transducer, just one of the oscillators. You may never display actual loose radiation, but you have the vital part in this production, remembering the scan of my early years, I felt much better. Then why are you disturbed? The precepts still itched inside me. They are, were right. What would I do with loose love if I had a larger warehouse full of it? Hand it out? It would only come back with interest and I would have to build another warehouse to hold the compounding growing volume. And the precept surged brightly. It was obvious. Someone somewhere, if I could. You are not ready at this point. Ready to go to somewhere? To meet someone? And all this? How do you fit in, my friend? If I had the courage to ask these, we are not someone, as you put it, nor are we from somewhere, uh, you indicate. Also, we are not the keepers of the garden of earth, nor the gardeners, nor do we collect on transform, transfer human developed loose energy. See what's going on here. Elsewhere or when we do not fit into any portion of the human compressed learning process. However, we have observed it generation and growth from its inception. We do participate when needed without interrupting the learning sequence. Such need is expressed when there is blockage in the flow. Such participation ultimately serves a vital need for us. I had a need to ask the question is 
Somewhere is not the heaven of your history. It was created, as were all the other systems. Then someone is a creator who was created. Uh, you are a creator who was created. Each of you does carry a small rote, as you call it, of someone who created you through the rote of someone you created. You carry the precept of the creator who created someone. I turn inward, <clears throat> and even with this viewpoint, it was hard to set aside serial logic. The easy precept was how to multi how the multitude of distortions, misconceptions, misdirections came about. A little knowledge can be dangerous, and human creative imagination took over f from there. If there had not been a someone, humans would not exist. I went over the idea of loose slash love. It must be quite a place to handle that much loose this somewhere. I would fall, it would fall neatly into many concepts of heaven. I grew wis, wistful. Maybe we would go just to the edges somewhere so I could get the feel of the place slash state where there was so much love surely near it but not in it just to observe from a distance it would answer so much that is not too much to ask Mr. Monroe we can arrange it close tightly click. Even closed tightly, the radiation was so strong that it was nearly unbearable. I felt as if sweat was pouring off me. I was melting, but it wasn't heat. It began to heave like great, great raking sobs, and I couldn't understand why. Then the radiation... East. I opened a little. And there was a form between me and the radiation, shielding me. I could perceive the corona effect all around the form from the radiation beyond. It reminded me deeply of religious paintings I had seen. Only this was alive and in something far different from pigmented color. This is as close as you can tolerate. We are diverting most of the effective energy patterns, which are in themselves only the random residue, the leakage, as you might call it, from the fundamental focus th through us rather than the outer rim. It will help. <clears throat> With great difficulty, I narrowed and held the, on the center of the form. I began to cool and calm. Slowly, my, radi my uh, rationale and observing self began to merge again, dominating the overwhelming emotional surge that had enveloped me. It was as if I perceived through the darkly tinted window and I had to work continually to keep the emotion below the threshold level. The wondrous and brilliant joy, awe, reverence melted into one yet with flashes of each sparking moment momentarily. Awe uh, coursing through me as I responded to the radiation, unable to prevent it and barely keeping it under control. This would most uh, emphatically be the ultimate heaven, the final home. Observe more carefully. You are capable of doing so. 
I look through the smoke glass shield. That was my inspect friend. And I was grateful, for I knew if I responded to this degree from just reflection, the leakage from uh, the full force of the radiation would have shattered me. I was not ready for it. If this was the precept from the distant edge, there in the long view was a radiant living form of incredible size, my first precept that of a tail standing humanoid, excuse me, a tall standing humanoid, arms outstretched in front, palms upward, but just as quickly it was not. Instead, a shining globe, edges indistinct, behind it another, identical in appearance, and behind it another and continuous cascade moving away into infinity. Beyond my precipitability, each came num numer numerous beams and rays, some huge in their diameter and others no wider than a pinpoint, all uniform in size throughout their length and beyond my precept as to their destination and some of them moving past me so close that I felt I could reach out and touch one. What would you like to do? What would you like to do so? We will help you if you needed, if needed. I hesitated then with a warm assurance from the shielding inspect form, I stretched a part of me out cautiously and touched the smallest ray nearest me. In an instant, the shock spread throughout all of what I thought I was, and I knew, and in, and knowing, knew that I would forget if I tried to remember because it was it, because what I was was could not yet handle the real reality of it yet i never again would be the same even without remembering except that it occurred and the indescribable joy of knowing only that it did take place and the echoes would rever reverberate in me throughout eternity whatever my eternity was gently i felt myself being detached from the ray and I clasped behind the shielding from my inspect friend. Friend. Inspect. I realized then how provincial my precept were, precepts were. I also realized how limited they were. The radiating globes and the ray emitted. You responded very well for the initial exposure. Your human loose slash love energy is transmuted into the center of what you per perceive. From there, it w w is redirected into what you call rays, to points where it is needed most. Then you have progressed. You guide, we guide you to one of the destinations so you can observe the results. My precept was not strong enough to bring any flicker whatsoever as to what exposure to the full force of such rays might be, but my human curiosity wouldn't let the basic question go unanswered. Now that I had smoothed somewhat, it was created. It was always there. We have no precept of the beginning. Are you ready to return now? I turn inward and close tightly. Click. We were back again in familiar blackness. And only now it seemed empty and sterile. But the inspect energy was still besides me. And now I knew. Now, and now I would have to put together a new indent for them. 
if they could hold up so calmly under. Inspect will serve as well as others, but I couldn't tell it alone. I couldn't let it alone, excuse me. Um, blah, 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 blah. As shaken as I was, I knew I had to ask because I had known they were greater, but how greater now might be a depth. We are created just as you are created. More than that, it is important that you obtain from your own precept and your own, how do you put it, time, you will find the reason for this. Suddenly I felt a strong urge to signal pulling at my back, at the back of me. I resisted at first, not wanting to leave, but the signal was persistent. With the warm pattern of understanding from my inspect friends, I turned and followed the signal. Instantly, I was hovering over my physical body. There below me was my second body. I slid into it easily, then into the physical. My right arm was tingling due to a lack of circulation. I eventually had been lying on it uh, at an angle. I flexed the arm several times, musing as I had so many times before. Suppose there was no signal to return. How long would I stay away? Would I never return? It was then, lying there in the darkness, listening to the uh, whippoorwill, whipper, whip, poor will, and the night cricket outside the soft earth uh, uh, oh my gosh scent, scented breeze so soft let me try this sentence again it was then lying there in the darkness listening to the whippoorwill and the night crickets outside the soft earth scented breeze flowing in through the open window, feeling the hot warmth of our little dog steamboat sleeping contently against the soles of my feet. And the uh, the even, even breathing, the even breathing of Nancy sleeping beside me, that I felt the wetness of my cheeks and a few remaining tears in my eyes. I remembered, not much, but I remembered. I sat up in bed, wanting to jump up and shout in uncomprehensible joy. Steamboat raised his head and looked at me curiously, then dropped back. My wife's stiff shift position as I sat up, then gradually resumed her even breathing rhythm. I would not wake her. She needed her rest and recharge. I lay back and, rem and remembered something. Sometime before dawn, I too fell asleep. One easy lesson. And I'll take a break here and go from there. But I think this, if I stop right there, it's good. It's two hours. I should make this, cut this in two sections anyways. Loosh. You read these two chapters and you think about what you just read and if you can it's a little uh, some thinking and pondering on what you just read and you know that's exactly what you're about. Why you're here at least. Loosh. 